Let's get comfy cosy. I'm not going to do my usual intro, I've already done it three times this week, so <laughs> uh, if you're new here it's lovely to welcome you. If you've been here before it's really lovely to have you back. Um, this will be probably slightly different, I spent a lot of yesterday filming and I took a lot longer than I have done in a while to record. I managed to slow myself down, I had everything as good as I thought it possibly could be in terms of no stupid disco lights, no. <laughs> um, and it decided not to focus on me. Apologies for last week's disco, that was 100% not intentional. Those should have been moved and I'm sorry if they caused you any problems. They have now been banished. They rolled a natural one and have been banished to their original spot, never to be seen again by the likes of you, hopefully. For whatever reason, I tried some another technique to try and get it better and who knows it was really quite a wreck so I will do my best to slow myself down again and talk through projects uh, with a bit more care and to just a bit more relaxed than usual. <sighs> so yes this is a little knitting space I document my kind of knitting journey and fibre journey in the hope to gain connection and a community which is something that I've definitely felt like I've been part of so thank you if you've been here and been part of that um, if you're looking for one we do have a really nice one over here so you'd be more than welcome to join in yeah I will talk 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 about uh, talk about what I'm wearing briefly I'm wearing my elf nail which is one of my favorite jumpers. This is a pattern by Danny Meager, who is Danny Knits Things on Instagram. I think they might be changing, I'm not sure. And this, I, it's really frustrating, but this was knitted using uh, my own hand dyed yarn. I have considered purchasing uh, a, a batch of yarn and dyeing up these colours. The gold is something I definitely can do. The greeny brown is a bit more difficult it was definitely one that I dyed just for me so I didn't write down but I think it's doable but I do know quite a few lovely dyes are now dyeing up gold on yak and this also looks really good in um, undyed I knitted a version using uh, a silver undyed yak and blue and sort of purpley mermaid colours and it was very cool but this definitely gets a lot more wear out there. Surprisingly I'm not that much of a gold person I didn't think but this is my colours. <laughs> um, and this is just a one by one ribbed hat knitted using Let Low P that I improvised and basically wear every day that it's worth wearing a hat in the UK. <laughs> um, I should probably knit another one very similar because it's basically all I wear and gift to my other hats. But anyway, I hope you have a cup of something to keep you company. I have a chai today, uh, a decaffeinated one, or uncaffeinated naturally I should say, um, after finding out my <laughs> video was that I really worked for, it went like that. I got a little bit upset and decided no more caffeine for the day. I got on my yoga mat, I practiced and had a really lovely time and sweet Alex has been here to set this up for me. <laughs> it's really bright. You're on. What have I got to say? Hello. My name's Cap or Catherine. Blah, da, 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 da. What was it? The third Thor film. The third Thor film. Third Thor third film. Third Thor film. Which is the third? Third Thor film is Ragnarok. Um, so yes, that all that to say I'm having a try as a way of just cozying myself in and trying to maintain a level of calm. I had a dream on 
Sunday, Saturday night, uh, that I stopped drinking coffee and I just totally gave it up uh, and I'm kind of listening to that. I will say I'm not giving up coffee forever because that's just not going to happen and that's not a viable goal. I really love the flavour. Um, but I'm going to be more conscious about what I'm drinking. And today we're sat, or I am sat in the, you are too, because it does feel like you're with me, uh, in spare room. Usually we have a housemate in this space, um, but it is quite nice to be in here to record actually. It's nice and plain. Um, we painted this over the Christmas holidays, um, and I don't know how many more times that I'll get to be in here, but actually I might insist on leaving these tripods up until next week so I can at least do another video in here because it's so plain. Hopefully I'm in focus. Right, let's talk about the stuff, shall we? And as things come up, there are moments that I will not be able to recreate, such as ripping a project out on camera. <laughs> you to hold me accountable. And if you have any projects you need to do this to, feel free to use me to hold you accountable too. And likewise, if there's anything you want to cast on and you've had any sense of nah or nerves, use me. You can, you can cast it on and you can try a new technique. That project is ripped out and I will not <laughs> Be that person to re knit it just to rip it out again. Mm. Let's pop that down. Yeah, let's talk about finished objects. So, this one is a test knit, and I have accidentally taken on three test knits this year, even though I've got two projects that are kind of sample projects that need to be knitted. Uh, fairly hastily, um, one in particular, but I just really want to kind of help lift up other designers, um, mostly people that are slightly early in, in their journey and don't, you know, um, and Harper, who is Disiani, is one of those people that it, it feels like they've always been designing. Harper's work is absolutely stunning and yeah, you'll see. So quickly, I am knitting the raven light -like gloves in a very hairy... <laughs> it's been rolling around the floor. Um, this is Whistle Bear's Cheviot Marsh 4-ply in the Glacial Breeze colourway, which was the remnants of my Brackenside Pines hat and jumper. And then this is Holst Super Soft um, in just black colourway. They are both fairly toothy yarns, which I really enjoy as a whole, but makes them really great for colour work. And though this was not my first choice 100%, I was trying to look for this, and I was going to do them closer to what Harper had done and use a sort of goldy colour. And um, this is from Forage and So Dye Works, the marigold colour. But I'm thinking, since they didn't use very much yarn at all, I might consider knitting myself a pair in this, or a, a gift. Um, I, yeah, I finished both of them. Um, when I went to show them yesterday, one of them would be un one would have been unblocked, and one of them would have been blocked. They have both been washed. This one has been washed twice, and it's bloomed yet again. Um, and I just love them, they're so cool. The little little crows, the little mushrooms, and the moon phases. These will be for Alex. I will weave in the ends, <laughs> promise. That is something that I will do. I, yeah, I can't remember what I even said about them yesterday, other than gushing for about 10 minutes. Um, but the pattern itself was really clear, it was very simple to follow, the colour work is charted. I ended up going down a needle size, I might um, I don't know why I'm 
struggling. It's because it's weird talking about it again. You'll get there. Um, you cast on here, do some twisted ribbing, the colour work begins, you create this gorgeous gusset actually for the thumb. I really like the way it sits. It actually feels... Um, the positioning's good. Um, I find that some gloves, they feel a bit weird where the thumb's been placed, so that's really good and a nice feature. Um, and they really didn't take very long. And if you are, I guess like myself, to a certain degree and on quite a budget, but you want to support indie makers, it might be close, but you might be able to use something like Holst Super Soft um, for the main colour and then purchase mini a mini skein for the contrast colour which would make it more affordable to use in de yarn and support you know independent dyers but also have a you know a wearable piece from a mini skein and I know that Advent's just been for a lot of knitters um, so maybe you've got those or you've got remnants of bigger projects uh, where you do have yarn left but it's maybe not doesn't seem enough to knit a hat or something you know useful oh dear fluff in my eye it's going to be one of these you know but hey at least we can see each other um yeah i really love what harper creates it has a harper has a gorgeous style the crodigan is something that maybe once upon a time I will knit, um, I keep staring at it, but it's not in my, uh, I definitely don't have time to knit it at the moment and I'd have to make sure I was getting the colours really right, which would probably be something really uncreative and be like this, but yeah, these will 100%, I can see myself knitting another pair of these in the future, but I do have, like I said, one secret project that I can't talk about, and I don't like having those projects, but it's it, it, it has to be, and hopefully when it gets shared it will be cool. And then I've got a sample that I've got here, which I might just show you next because you've already seen it if you've been here, and if you haven't... Um, yeah. So... This is a project bag that was made very lovingly from Maggie of the Sondering Knitting and Reading Podcast. Uh, Maggie is one of my favourite people to watch. She's one of my favourite bits of company. Um, but I say that all the time. <laughs> um, so in here is these three colourways from Gathered Sheep Fibres, Ga Gathered Sheep Yarns. I have to apologise, I am a little bit off. So this is muslin, this is delightfully fragrant and this is earth and it is really fun getting to share because you know people see things differently. I felt like these were reading as kind of slightly medieval, like a combination of rags to riches or royal to you know none. Um, and someone said Neapolitan ice cream. I've never had Neapolitan with this red, but I would be into it, I'm sure. Um, this base is the BFL Gotland DK, and I really love it. It's soft, It's it's got a halo, it's got um, these dark fibres in it, which like affects the overall dyeing and gives much more depth. It's, yeah, I, I, I really love it. <laughs> I'm gonna have another sip of my tea. I'm not gonna let this one go cold because I did yesterday. And if this goes wrong and I've let this tea go cold, I'm gonna be very upset. <laughs> um, and I am using that for my Wild Mother shawl, which is a pattern that I came up with to replace my first ever shawl, which was a grain shawl by Tin Can Knits. 
knitted using a variety of kind of leftovers from my first few projects and I was very kindly sent some hand spun yarn and used it to knit a shawl and unfortunately the way I knitted it I didn't track yardage or anything so I couldn't share the pattern when lovely makers like yourself asked for it so I opted to speak to lovely Sarah and we are working on some colours we spent quite a while backing and forthing on what colours to use and I was maybe going to use colours similar to my original but I think that or you know you'd have already seen the kind of feel that that gives so I thought trying something very different would be fun. So I've got this far, I am working on these cables along the side and then I'll do a bit more red and back onto some garter. It is knitting up really lovely, I'm so happy with the drape. It's a really lovely gauge, you can feel it's already going to be warm but it feels fairly light, especially compared to the hand spun. And I'm also really impressed with the stitch definition considering that it does have a halo. Um, yeah, uh, I don't really want to comment on the pattern writing <laughs> or anything like that uh, because it is, it is almost finished, I just really need to work on the getting the yardage. And this is something that I am actively working on but not rushing through and that can be said for everything here. When my <laughs> cast on that I can't share is on the needles that will become priority and that won't be knitted in a blind panic. Hopefully you, you can't hear Alex up to no good. Um, but it will be knitted with a sense of urgency because it really is a bit urgent. <laughs> I'm very much trying to carry through with my intentions. So last year, if you were here, my intention was to move through my days. Dishwasher, of course. Um, move through my days more intentionally overall. So choosing what every, every part of what I was knitting was trying to focus on being in intentional and this year I want every month to kind of feel like a bit of a fresh start and if goals carry over that's one thing but I want to reflect at the beginning of the month and carry those goals or intentions with me differently if necessary. So this month my real aim is to just be a little bit more firm and to cultivate boundaries between work and play and to try and really allow myself the time to play because that's something that I feel like I was missing and hopefully later down the line through the the setting boundaries creating um, more of a collaborative environment for myself and other makers and when I say boundaries I do mean so not responding to anything out of office hours if I can help it um, and that goes for even sending creative friends who are making things if I have an idea I will try and note that down and message them in the work hours rather than maybe on a Sunday night at 8pm which is something I've always been conscious of because it quite upsets me <laughs> when I get work stuff and that's not to say don't ever send it's just it means that because this is different but you know you feel like a, there's an obligation to read or look at it and I think that that's a very bad habit to get into and it's a Sunday night you know you're playing D&D &D, you're about to go to bed the last thing you need to be doing is starting your work week before you've even gone to bed so that's another thing that I'm trying to be conscious of and work through this year. Which does, does lead me on to my 
uh, mood boards. So last year I created some mood boards for spring, summer, autumn and winter and then combined them into one overriding mood board to see if I could knit more intentionally to fit what I'm drawn to and I've noticed that since I've been knitting and become more aware I'm knitting more and more things that do sit into that and therefore I'm wearing them more and I think that mood board needs updating so I'm hoping to this week or next to go through my wardrobe take some photos like I did before and update it and have another look and I do think the more the world opens up um, the more that will change because the style of clothes will change a little bit but hopefully that's something that I can then share and put on Ko-Fi and if you that's something you also want to do then there's a template for it and I'm going to try and figure out a way to use something other than pages because that limits who can use it but that's, that's how I made it, it was that simple um, but yeah, that's another thing that I'm trying to work on. I'm gonna hit pause just because time. <laughs> this one is one that I ripped out on camera yesterday. So <laughs> it is actually still partially together. So I can show you. Um, but it's this. Doesn't look like much. It's not. But I went to cast on, or I did cast on, the Petal Tails sweater or pullover by Sachigo Bergen. It's a gorgeous pattern that uses sport weight yarn. It has this beautiful sort of leaf or petal detail around the yoke. You knit without knitting the, uh, the neckline, the hem, the hem, the neckline, and knit a folded hem at neckline at the end. I do apologise, I had to, uh, my brain's a bit scattered now. Um, <laughs> um, and then it has these gorgeous straight sleeves and a little bit of petal detail on the sleeves that end without cinching in, which is novel for me. I think it's going to be a really beautiful piece for my wardrobe. It was a pattern that was very kindly gifted to me through my DM, which is why I happen to have my little crit and knit badge on here, which is a pin badge by Hannah, who is the corner of craft or chromatic yarns. Um, and I do hope to knit on this whilst playing D and D. And I ripped it out because I want to pay attention when knitting this, and I know that it's going to be so fun for me that. I want it to be an almost monogamous project so once I've cleared my needles with these test knits and the kind of have do's this is going to be a comforting knit to pattern but adjusting the yarn weight kind of knit so I've ripped it out so that I can really really just enjoy it when the time comes um, <laughs> all the stitch markers in the back just rattling around yeah I will probably I thought I was going to knit the second size and knit it in DK but I'm thinking I might knit the smaller size and knit it in DK um, since this actually work knits up as beautiful fabric at the needle that's recommended I think it was a 4 mil or 4.5 I can't remember but using the recommended needle size is what I used for my braids of grass jumper which I previously knitted using this yarn and this yarn is Shropshire DK from You and Ply and as you probably see it's quite a a lofty base there is about 247 meters per 100 grams and this colorway is Oddswold's tree you imply is a wonderful shop if you've ever been lucky enough to order from them they always have something brilliant written on the postage and in fact it's one of my favorite reasons to order from them um, both of my orders previously had a skein at least of the colorway middle earth and both of my 
parcels came with a Lord of the Rings reference on, which is just... Um, but yeah, I've had this green for a while and I did think I was going to knit um, potentially another Eastwind jacket using this yarn, but I think this is going to be perfect for this project and since this is a colour I'm really drawn to at the moment, I think this will be a good addition to my wardrobe for wearing with the likes of this and my black jeans that I'm currently wearing. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to knitting this and I just want to, like I say, continue to be a, a, intentional, so knitting things that are right at the right time. Um, wee wow. I have... So... Some of you, if you've been here, you'll know this already, that this is a cone of yarn from Woolly Knit. I have knitted a few jumpers in their yarn now and have found it to be a really affordable, hardy yarn. The patterns so far that I've knitted using this have held up really nicely. They haven't peeled, uh, not yet anyway. Um, it was nice to knit with both held single and double. Uh, it is 100% British wool, about 2,350 metres for 500 grams, and I think this came in at like five or seven pound for a cone, which is really, really very affordable. And from what I was very kindly sent from Sarah, who's Stripey Cat Yarns, it seems to be fairly... Alex is making coffee, which is part of the reason that I've been all over the shop. I can hear stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it does seem to have fairly sensible or acceptable ethics um, and they do use or have merino uh, cones of this as well so if you are not into slightly toothier yarns you might find that the higher micron count of the merino is more suitable for you but I much prefer a, a more toothy yarn for most of my projects lend themselves to that apart from this one but since I know that I can wear this next to skin with no issue, it is a, a, a light fingering, so maybe a three ply kind of vibes. Um, I felt like this would be perfect and after swatching, it has been. So far I am knitting the Mesh Pullover by James N. Watts, who designed the Look at My Holes top, which is a pattern that I knit just before, like at the beginning of December maybe, and I've really enjoyed having that in my wardrobe as someone that has this wild body temperature and a temperature that's almost always a little bit high, um, having layers and airy layers and building them and being able to take them off is really good for me. And I felt like I wanted to knit a long sleeve version of that top, but then I saw the Pure Mesh, which is a long sleeved mesh top, basically. Um, and it was designed to be knitted using Felix, which is a base from La Bienname. And I think it's Corridale and Silk. And I do want to knit, I think, another version in a more summery yarn. I definitely will do that, but since it's winter, I feel like this is going to be perfect. And this is as far as I've got. So it is knitted in pieces and then seamed. I am not adverse to seaming. This is the sort of the fabric, hopefully you can see it hold against the white. This is the fabric that it will be all over. Um, and then, so this is the front. I mean, you can sort of tell it's twisted here. Um, because I'm doing some shaping, but this will be the front, and then it is seamed together. I'm not sure about the sleeves, I think they're probably seamed too, but I haven't haven't checked that far. Um, seaming is something that I'd like to get better at, so test knitting is a really good reason to, and I don't think it's hassle. I know that some knitters really don't like it, and some people only knit seamed patterns. I'm 
flexi seamer um, and yeah I'm quite looking forward to getting a bit of seaming practice and enjoying the structure that seams often give us. So yeah, I'm enjoying this so far, I don't have too much to report in that. It's just a flat bit of mesh at the moment really. I am using wooden needles, I'm using 8mm uh, which I do really enjoy having projects to flip back and forth from that have between small needles and larger needle sizes. I think it's really important to remember to drink water, stretch, but also if you insist on knitting for longer periods, it's kind of nice to have different movements for your hands to do and this definitely provides that with the all over texture. So the combination between not just knit stitches and purl stitches and large needles, this is like a, a very good welcome break, if you will. I paused to have a little bit of a, a moment because it's all going wrong again. Next week will be good. <laughs> um, yeah, enjoying it. This should be done by the end of the month and I think it's being released at the beginning of next month, maybe mid, but I think at the beginning. And then my final other project is another test and it's for lovely Alison who is Intentional on Instagram, Intention L, and she designed the easy teasy top that I just finished, um, the red top with lace that I was wearing yesterday. <laughs> just, it, I feel a bit like, uh, I don't know, if Helena Bonham Carter was a librarian. Um, not wearing it now. Um, and this is a test knit for the Sunny Dale High top, uh, which again is in black and doesn't look like anything right now, but it's a gorgeous long sleeve top with a slight V. Um, I will check with her and see if I can put a picture up. If not, you'll see it hopefully in the next week or so. Um, but this is slightly different for me. I am using a yarn that I wouldn't normally choose um, but I definitely wanted to use what was recommended for this since I think that has a big impact on the final look and feel of the garment. And I'm using, I think it's Buchel, I'd probably say it wrong, yarn by Drops, but it is this loopy, loopy yarn, um, and it's 80% alpaca, 15% wool, and what well, the part that I'm not into is the 5% polybide. But so far it's been fun to knit with. It is, it does take a little bit of getting used to, I guess, like mohair or a brushed alpaca in, in that you, you've got these loops that your yarn might get caught in. But once you've knitted a few rows, it becomes very natural, or it has done for me. Um, and it does feel, it feels not super soft. It is soft, but it's not like that, um, ridiculous angora that I used but it's still very soft and I think it will be lovely when it's finished so this this is in ribbing but because of the nature of the yarn it actually lays pretty flat which is quite cool which is the reason that I opted to use the recommended yarn it might be that I love this style of long sleeve top rather than jumper so much that I knit it again in a not this but yeah, so, so far knitted the back shoulder, joint, the second shoulder, or knitted one shoulder, knit the other, and then joined them with some cast on stitches, and then I picked up over on the right shoulder. Um, and I guess I'll be doing this shoulder next and then joining. So yeah, really enjoying this again. It feels nice to knit on something different this, I just really enjoy a different construction method and having the combination of different type projects has been really nice this time of year. Um, you know, I did a lot of sock knitting at the end of last year and yeah, I've been really enjoying this. So 
yeah, I'm looking forward to all of these tests being done and I'm not rushing through them again. Like, I don't have a need to rush. Just want to not be overwhelmed and to enjoy my knitting rather than it being, you know, because it should be, it should be what we love. I hope to do some gift knitting early this year. I'm going to write a list, go through some of my books and my pattern library and kind of see if I can pair a few things together. I am desperate to knit some of these lobster mitts which were designed by my gorgeous friend Angie um, for a, a friend of mine. I just keep umming and ahhing about yarn choice. Red seems like the obvious choice but she's a green person who therefore is definitely a green person so I've been umming and ahhing but that's going to be a really fun cast on that I can't wait to do. And finally coming back to my kind of hopes for this year and today's been a very bad example of that Alex will attest um, to that but I wanted to make sure that this year like I said had more time for play and this Saturday we definitely did that like in various different forms um, but I don't oh, I don't have the undyed with me now should I go and get it I'll go and get it. So this really isn't going as smoothly as yesterday's really lovely sit down that is completely out of focus. So behind you is lovely Alex, so don't be scared if you get the touch on the shoulder. Um, for a bit of moral support, which is maybe making me feel even weirder if I'm honest. And he's now messing with the camera. Thank you, honey. Um, so as I was saying, we, I have been trying to make more time for play and that might go out the window this week in uh, an extra day of editing, but we ended up doing a bit of dyeing this weekend, which was really, really fun. So this is some very vegetable mattery um, Jacob fleece. It's been washed multiple times, yet it's still smells like sheep um, and I put some in the dye bath and I got Alex to assist me in choosing colours. I started with some chestnut which is more like this colour and then we, um, he's, he's escaping, um, then we, I asked Alex kind of what, what other colours we should go for and we ended up going for a sky blue uh, and a yellow and kind of merged the colours and played with the colours a little bit and here is the outcome um, it is a bundle of joy do you want to come in? it's okay we'll wait till I've finished this is going to be really disjointed more disjointed than it is but it's honestly I'm really really happy with the outcome I ended up the way we dyed it is we just popped it all into the dye pan, poured the colours on separately and did a little bit of mushing to make sure the colours blended a bit. Once it was washed and dried, I then separated it into piles on the floor so that I could play with the blending using these little mini colours which are mini. Um, it takes ages and I definitely have a questionable brushing style but it works. There is intentionally left a few naps so that there will be pops of colour hopefully in the final yarn. This is all I used, just brushing. Um, and I have started spinning and I'll insert some footage of that while I'm talking probably. Um, and I'm just in the process and I think I've already set my heart on this style, so a two ply yarn. Um, so when I was, rather than a chain ply, which is something I might do, I seem to always put too much twist in it. So I just don't think that it's going to be that beautiful and since I know this works and I really enjoy knitting with two ply, I'm going to stick with what I know. 
But the reason that I also bought this was because there was a moment where I thought I might try and do a fractal spin like this and in intense, intentionally place colours in the spin in a certain way to create this kind of fade. But this is the style we're going for. So I've started spinning it and I'm just pulling out the colour that I fancy and going, going for a little spin. I haven't done as much as I'd like, uh, especially now. I'd hoped that today I'd have been able to do a little bit between lunch, but it's gone lunchtime and we've not eaten lunch. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping to do a bit more of that tonight. But if not, in my time of play at the weekend. So I'm looking forward to doing that a lot. Um, and Alex, you have a project that you wanted to share. I was going to just give this to you to share because you've shown dad stuff. And you can give a word of warning for anyone that shares a spoon. So, as part of our gorgeous advent calendar that we were sent from, well, we did a kind of a swap from lovely Nicole, who is Time Weaver. So, I sent Nicole a finished item, a cardigan and some yarn, back in October. And then she very kindly sent me a custom advent calendar, so sort of a hybrid of some of the things. And for the final day, Alex was given a logwood naturally die set. This has got, I think it's superwash and nylon, but it will be nevertheless absolutely stunning. And Alex did a great job on dyeing it with logwood. Did it smell good? Yeah. Yeah, smell good. It's a really nice colour to come out of it. Never used logwood before. Yeah, it gives this beautiful purple colour. I have a, a skein of mohair actually dyed with logwood by Ada but it all was going very well until Alex put the yarn in a second time and the spoon that we use for dyeing had some red left on it from who knows when and sadly it did get into the yarn but I still think we'll use this and I think it will knit up beautifully whether Alex knits some socks with it or whether it goes into the project with the mohair maybe yeah, did you have fun? Yeah. Anything else to add? Logwood's great, I'd like to get some more. Logwood's great. But like it's found in New Mexico and not in the UK, so it might be quite tricky to <laughs> forage it. <laughs> it's not a very uh, UK grown. Yeah, hopefully I'm but trying to persuade Alex to sit down with me for a little bit and fill in our diaries just each month with a few of the in-season things that we can collect to dye with because Alex has got probably five or six skeins now of yarn to or balls to dye. It'd be nice to sort of be a little bit organised and be able to reflect to the beginning of the month in our journal and go ah uh, we'll go out and see if we can get some alder kinds we'll see how if we can go and get some gorse things like that. That's really fun. Um, what else is there? So, other than that, I have to say, Sean Lewis, if you're here, I don't know what this is, but if you're here, please, please send me a message back either on Ko-Fi or via email would maybe be better. But I sent you a message on the 1st of January to say that you've won a prize. And I have been thinking of a way of offering up uh, more, less of a giveaway, more as a give back. Um, so at the first of the month going forward, I will go through all of those lovely people who have been a member or have donated to our Ko-Fi. And if you're a member, you'll get two entries any donations is an entry and then hit the wheel of fortune and once a month someone will win and that might be 
it could be anything, it could be a print, it could be some fiber, it could be some hand spun yarn, it could be some yarn, it could be some stitch markers, project bag, but I just really wanted to find a way of giving back and I felt like that was a fun way of doing it and starting it in the new year was fun. So Sean, please get in touch if you're here. That would be cool. Um, and then finally, Alex is still stud here, by the way. Um, I finished my last book that I was reading, which was The Witch's Heart, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it was so different to The Empire of the Vampire by J. Kristoff. It was... He's tiptoeing away. He's <laughs> really distracting. <laughs> He's just throwing a teasel at me. It, it, it's Jay Kristoff's books definitely for an adult. Um, I thought it was really, really good personally. I love his descriptive style. Um, I know that some people think it's a bit over the top, but I quite like that. I thrive on really over the top writing. I think it helps my imagination really get lost. Um, the Witch's Heart was more, it was slower at the beginning and then really fast at the end, which I really enjoyed and uh, the the take on Norse mythology was really, in, like, it was really fun to me um, and since we've been watching the Avengers films and we just watched Thor Ragnarok last night, um, it kind of tied in quite nicely and I was like, oh yeah! And this happened and this is this is different. Um so it was really good like a to tie in with what ended up happening and maybe it triggered that kind of journey to watching the Avengers. But that's been really fun too. Um but yeah, really enjoyed the book and we I managed to get Alex to the library last Saturday, I think, and we both got out a book each. I got out The Frighteners by Peter Laws. I don't know what drew me to the psychology section, that's not something I was intending to do this year, Is I just wanted to read fantasy novels, but um, this, I don't know, I saw the black and red and got suckered in, and I'll just read the back because it's easier than trying to describe it through my own voice. Um, Peter Laws is an ordained reverend, he's supposed to be a professional nice person. So why does he spend his spare time watching gruesome horror films, shooting zombies and writing crime novels? Grab your crucifixes, pack the silver bullets and join the sinister minister on his strange, scary and often hilarious quest to understand what our macabre tendencies can teach us about humanity, society and spirituality. I'm really enjoying this so far. I'm only three chapters in, but it's definitely making me giggle. Um, it starts with him going to Transylvania for his 40th birthday um, and it's definitely a chatty novel, uh, chatty book but yeah I'm really enjoying it so far it's silly and also interesting actually why we do like the dark and actually how it's natural but I won't go into it too much about it just yet I'm gonna get further along and hopefully talk about it a bit more um, yeah hopefully First of all, I'm in focus. Second of all, it wasn't too of much of a wild ride. I do apologise. I think next week's going to be great, right? Is this going to be the whole of 2022? Just like the whole of 2020 and 2021? No. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for bearing with me. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that this does find you well. I hope that Whatever you get up to this week, you do do something to maybe add a bit of joy to your day, a bit of playful energy to your world. I have been doing the Workout Adventure series. There's a challenge going on at the moment with Workout Adventure on Instagram and in a Discord group. And Workout Adventure is something I'm not, I don't have to say anything, I just really enjoy doing it. Um, and it is basically like playing D D but as a workout you've got you have a dice and they will tell you kind of a story as you're moving through things 
So last week it was the Monk's Quest and the Barbarian's Quest, which are both free. And I know that everyone, a lot of people get excited about moving and that at this time of year. And I, there's no me telling you you need to do anything. It's just a really fun way of moving if you are looking for something and a new way of doing it. It's good. I think it would be very easy to adjust to different levels. So completely pulling back if you needed to um, or making it a lot harder with more plyometric movements. Um, so for example, the Monk's Quest, if, if you wanted to try it, instead of doing any running, just go for a walk and pull back on some of the movements. So instead of jumping jacks, maybe just walking marches, anything like that. And then on the other end of the spectrum, if you really can push it, you just do as many reps per round as you possibly can, ignoring what the dice tells you to really barbarian it up. Anyway, yeah, I just wanted to share it because I'm having a lot of fun doing so and I've heard a few people when I've mentioned it say, oh, I didn't know. And the more I share that with people, the more people can join in and we can go on the quests together. Anyway, I will love you and leave you and hope to see you again very soon. Take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones and don't forget to love each other. I don't think this is safe for your posture to do for any length of time, is it?